So the next step now is to do the a split surface and a graded region for um, the embankments, especially around the bottom edge through here, but possibly up around the top as well. So to do that, I'm going to work in my site plan to do most of that, so I'll change to the site plan view. And the first thing I'm going to do for that in that regard is I'll put a section in. Now I'll put a section in down around about here, extending out a little bit further through the sides of the embankment. I'm going to make that section rather skinny. So just as anyone here see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm making I'm making this slice of ground that we're going to be looking at a very thin slice of ground, so it's not going to get too confusing looking back in the background to see all other ground shapes. I'm just looking at a very uh, thin sectional view. So when I've got that section in place, what I'm going to be doing with that section now is I'm going to be looking at that section view in, in, in the sectional elevation and then deciding what slope I want on my embankment, leaving some marks for that slope and leaving some marks behind on the site plan to indicate the bottom of this embankment here. So I'll show you what I mean. I'll open up that section view, and here you can see I've got the new construction soil that's been nicely leveled out, and through here I've got the, um, the existing ground surface. So obviously it wouldn't happen like that. The ground's not going to come along and just stop. So it's going to have a bit of an embankment through here. So let's consider this as an average sort of um, um, meet a class M type site. I would, I would suggest that something like a, a fill batter, because this is fill material, something like a fill batter of about the two and three slope. So for every two vertical, two units vertically we go, we go three units horizontally. So what I'm going to do to create that slope is I'll draw a detail line. I just went DL for detail line there, but you could go and at the annotate menu and use detail line through here. Um, when you're drawing that detail line, uh, pick a line style that's going to stand out for you, or something like in the template file of solid one or something like that. And I'm going to zoom in on this edge of the platform and I'm going to come across a distance of 2000 and then down a distance of three, sorry, I got that wrong, didn't I? I need to come across a distance of 3,000, so just added another metre there, come down a distance of 2,000, and then close back on the end point that I started at. So I'll just delete those lines now. So what I've created there is a slope of 2 in 3. So And that, that would be the slope that I would expect I could form that batter at. Now, I'm get, I need to go back to my site plan, but when I go back to the site plan, I won't see this line. I need to leave something on this view that will show up in the site plan. And the best thing that will show up in the site plan would be a reference plane. So either type RP for reference plane, or from the home menu over here, you've got your reference plane. And leave a reference plane where that surface intersects the natural ground, and just leave that reference plane up through there. So that would be, if you like, a stake in the ground that would mark the bottom of the embankment. If you, while I'm here, I'll just do the other side. So it's the same, it's the same situation. I could probably even just pick that line up and mirror it, mirror that line about some point through here. Go and find where that line went and it went over here. So now I'll just move it. Or you could just draw the two in three slope again yourself. But that's just a quick way of establishing that same shape over this side. Leave a reference plane. I just typed RP for the shortcut for reference plane then. And that leaves that reference plane at that point there as well. Now what happens when I go back to my site plan now, I will see those reference planes. So let's go to the site plan, double click on the site plan, and there you can see we were looking along this section line and we can see those reference planes. So those reference planes indicate where the bottom of the embankment would be at that section of plane. So I'm just going to leave a detail line there. So either annotate detail line or DL is the shortcut key. And click a circle. So a circular type of detail line. And just where you get where you think the intersection is. It won't actually snap, but that doesn't matter. So I'm going to leave a mark there, and then I'll copy that mark 
over to the other side. So, if you like, in plain view now, a way of thinking about this is I've now just p put a peg in the ground or a stake in the ground where the bottom of the embankment would be. So now that I've done that, I'm going to delete that line, that reference plane, and delete that reference plane. And that, but those marks being the bottom of the embankment will stay in place. While I've got this section plane there, I'm going to move the section plane up and do it all again. Now, this time, when I've moved that section plane up and opened it up, this time, the section plane will be giving me a, f a small amount of cut, not fill. And you can see you've got this uh, demolished surface maybe confusing your view a little bit. So before you go any further, just scroll down to the phase filter for the view properties and make that show previous plus new, just like we did before, and apply that. That just tidies up that view a little bit. Now, from this end through here, because this is now cut, you could probably get a detail line from there at a 45 degree angle, because in a Class M site, um, a, a, a slope on your batter of a one-in-one -one slope would probably be a, appropriate for something that's been cut into cut material. We used a two-in-three slope before because that was filled material. So where that one-in-one -one 45 degree slope comes in there, I'll just leave another reference plane. So what we've just done now is we've come from our platform to where the top of that cut embankment would be. I'll do the same over the other side. A detail line from where the flat platform would be. Take it up at 45 degrees because that would be a one-in-one -one cut and leave a reference plane in where that um, cut met natural ground. So that would be where you would cut back at 45 degrees to meet your natural ground. This is a fairly um, academic exercise in this case because there's so little cut at this point it might not even be worthwhile doing. But for the purpose of um, the academy, like I'm saying, we, we might as well do this. Okay, so I would, um, I, I would then, we've left those reference planes in place, so I can then open up the site plan, and through here you can now see along that section plane, these marks will give you the point where the top of the batter would be. So I'm going to take a copy, just check that multiple is on, so you can copy these all in one go, from the centre of that circle to this mark. Okay, and while I'm there, I'll move that across and put that mark in place as well. Okay, so I'll let you catch up to that point, and I'll just stop the stop the video just at this point before we go any further.